Welcome and Namaste, Adam Sia Kaal. This is Sia Sankal Kanstia. Welcoming each one of you in this amazing session on strategic cost and performance measurement. All right, guys. So we kick started chapter number two in the last session, modern business environment. Ensured that the theory concept part plus the practical sums plus the MCQs are given equal weightage. and all of them were done in last session now to do today before we start the session what i will do is have a quick recap of all that we did last time as a matter of uh, you know regularity we will try to always have a recap of what we did in the last session and then probably start the current session so modern business environment is what we started with last time so here we write down modern business environment and this modern business environment is divided into three parts correct for the concept terms it is divided into three parts first that we did yesterday was cost of quality then we have something called as tqm total quality management which we are going to focus today so for total quality management and obviously the third part is your scm which is called as supply chain management all right guys so these are the three concepts that majorly we have to do for this chapter of which we kick started with cost of quality which got divided into two parts one cost of good quality cost of good quality and cost of bad quality in cost of good quality there were again two divisions one related to prevention the other related to appraisal cost and the bad quality was also further subdivided into two parts one related to internal failure and the other related to external failure right so internal failure and external failure so this is how the whole modern business environment uh, the cost of quality stood like plus we did some additional concepts like the paf model what is your paf model correct it is prevention appraisal and failure and failure right that okay after paf model we saw something called as the iceberg model what did the iceberg model tell us that the hidden costs are much more much higher than the apparent costs above the sea level so this was also done uh, from our end then some small concepts like optimal cost of quality so optimal cost of quality tells us that what is the right amount of cost of conformance and cost of non conformance that we should follow and lastly that we did was rather we started the the theory part from the book through the concept of movement from suppliers market to the current situation which is the buyers market which is the buyers market all right so this is your optimal cost of quality all right guys so these are the three concepts i mean the internal concepts of cost of quality that we did last time i hope everything is now clearer to you and you are able to recall all of this right the paf models the five step paf model number of failures then identifying those failures into the categories of prevention appraisal uh, internal failure external failure remember right and then you know allocating the resources for the same evaluating the performance regularly so that was your paf model the iceberg model told us that above are the only few things but beneath the water there are so many other hidden quality costs which should also be taken care of equally then was the optimal cost of quality and the shift from buyers uh, from the suppliers market to now buyers market especially on account of globalization of economy then there is uh, you know 
excess efficiency, excess capacities in the market is there. So all of these things are have led from supplier's market to buyer's market. So this was about the yesterday's session. As I told you, we'll take around five minutes and that's what we have taken for concluding this. Now, let's start with today's new concept and that basically is total quality management. Yes, everyone, total quality management. Let's understand this total quality management in detail. Let's understand this in detail as to what exactly it means. Let's start with the first word. The first word that we can see here is total. What, you know, again, these concepts were also started in Japan. Right after World War II, when Japan was, you know, getting back on its uh, legs after the Hiroshima Nagasaki bombing, the the concept of TQMs, the cost of qualities were basically introduced. So basically Toyota, all of us have heard the name, is the pioneer of this whole total quality management. They introduced this in their factories, in their industries and wow, how beautifully it was implemented worldwide. You know, uh, if you tell anybody that I have a Toyota brand automobile or a Toyota brand, that itself works so much because they have worked towards it. Also, this concept TQM is like a process, a never ending process. It is not a product that, okay, you have made it and you know, you can now use it. It is a never ending process, which will go on and on forever. Like, like, uh, you know, I'll just give you an example of cricket. Sachin Tendulkar, even after playing for 24 years. I still remember his last test match when it was his last innings. Even on that day morning, he practiced first and then went on to play his final match. Now a person playing that same game, same thing for 24 years called a god for that particular uh, sport still came to practice. Why? Because he knows that there is a process which is to be followed. That the more he practices, the better it will be for his team. So that way, TQM is a process to be followed by everyone in the organization on a continuous basis to be able to achieve or to be able to sustain the total quality management, right? As, as Mr. M.S. Dhoni says, right? Thala says that, Focus on the process. Don't focus on the outcome. By default, if your process, if your inputs, if your work ethic is good, you will get the results eventually. Maybe you may uh, falter a time or a two, but eventually you will definitely get your results. So follow the process. The impact, the output will definitely be yours. And that's what TQM is all about. Alright guys, so chalo. Now let's decode more of this concept. First is total. So what I will do is I will explain you all these three concepts. What is total? What is quality? And what is management? And then we will join all of them to get our final answer. So what is total? Total means everyone totally acceptable to everyone in the organization. So it is not just one person who has to be responsible for this. It is not just the lower level employees. It is not just the supervisory. It is not just the top level. Everyone from top to bottom to middle level employee, the person who is reporting, the head of departments has to be equally conscious about giving the best quality products. The second part of total is that it should include everybody in the supply chain. So it is not only going to be the employees who are working within the factory. Okay, Toyota, what did they do for applying total quality management? They even went to their supplier. So Toyota purchases its raw material requirements from Nippon Dentsu, one of the, again, a Japanese company. So they went along with their engineers, went to their shop floor. Shop floor means the place where uh, the raw material is produced. They saw whether this company is able to provide us with the best quality raw material. See, the, the concept is pretty clear. If the raw material supplier is not using quality, is not using total quality management, 
then in that case the output will not be good no i my output is as good as my raw material input if the plastic used in this remote is not of good quality the remote will not have a long life right so the plastic has to be good where does the plastic come from from the supplier so let me go and check how good the supplier is because if the supplier gives me garbage the output will be garbage as they say garbage in garbage out <laughs> so that ways it becomes very very important for a company to ensure that the total concept is not only applied in the within the factory itself but throughout the whole supply chain throughout the whole supply chain it should be applied and that's how the system should work i hope we are clear with this concept now another third part of total was that it should be a part of all the phases of an organization so an organization goes through a four phases that will be explained to you in chapter 4 in detail so it should be a part of all the phases as in uh, introduction phase growth phase now usually after the growth phase people think that okay now no uh, more need to focus on tqm no your tqm thing is going to be there till the last product that you are going to solve till the last match that you are going to play the practice the the focus will remain the same irrespective it is the first match or irrespective it is the last match so irrespective whether it is in the introduction stage so when the product is in introduction stage you give full your focus you give your heart out of uh, out for the same so that's okay but do the same thing even when it is in a decline stage you would have heard introduction growth maturity decline even when the product is in decline stage give everything that you can for that product to ensure to get the best out of it so as i told you it's a process it's not an end result that you are going to get right so it is a continuous basis you have to keep on improving your works your processes and that's how tqm will be implemented so first priority total what is total total includes all the people in the organization including the supplier of raw material including the products to be treated the same way be it the introduction maturity growth or decline stage got it guys so that's about your total i'll just uh, write it down so that it gets ingrained in your subconscious mind so what did i say total quality management applicable to all employees so do we need to write this see it's always good to write because then you are attentive you are focused and once you write you can just uh, feel that okay now you'll never forget this so it's always good but 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 it takes effort ah are you ready for it definitely go ahead with this so all employees in the organization everyone huh? from low level peon to supervisor to top level manager and owners everybody is a part of this total as i told you it also includes the supplier it also includes the supplier and all stages of product life cycle all stages of product life cycle could be introduction could be growth could be maturity could be decline at all stages at all employees at all persons tqm will be equally responsible right second part of the game is quality what exactly is quality for me it is always one thing quality is giving the customer more than what he or she expects for me this is quality but formally what they had said about quality yesterday in our session let's see let's understand that so they say that quality basically is conformance to customer specification as can be seen from here 
satisfy customer expectation and give them value for money fair enough i think fair points to you know, confirm to yes customer what customer is doing what is his specification his own expectations giving him value for money fair fair points are you understanding with me yes so so we, we will continue writing that but for me it is exceeding customer expectations giving the customer what they want yes confirming to product specifications agreed no doubt about that whatsoever and uh, also agreed with the point that customer expectations should be satisfied give them value for money so let's write that down for me quality is exceed customer expectations exceed customer expectations at the same time also ensure that you are satisfying customer needs satisfy customer needs satisfy customer needs got it so this is about your total quality management total quality management total quality that yes exceeding customer expectations satisfying their needs and the third part is management what is management in general about management is all about few things like planning organizing staffing putting the systems in place most importantly putting systems in place so all of that is a part of your management putting systems in place all of this when joined together becomes tqm total quality management so this kind of sums up your total quality management now obviously we will open our theory books and try to get a proper glimpse of it but i hope in a nutshell you are clear total everybody has to be involved in providing quality what quality which exceeds customer expectation satisfy customer needs but all of this will only be possible with proper planning organization staffing uh, ensuring the systems are in place and all of this combined together with everybody involved gives you tqm please ladies and gentlemen open from your textbook the concept of tqm the concept of tqm yes so it is a management approach originated in the 1950s the time when the jurands and the demings went to united states of america and has steadily become popular since the 1980s the concept of tqm was developed jointly by edwards deming joseph juran armand finbaum tqm is a philosophy that tends to integrate seeks to integrate all organizational functions like marketing finance design engineering production customer service etc with only one focus meeting customer needs and organization objectives so every every aspect has to be involved as i told you total you know it could be a finance team the marketing team the shop floor team the operations team design engineering production purchase all the teams equally have to work to get things right at the best level see we will just come here first see here tqm total entire organization with its supply chain focus on product life cycle introduction growth maturity and decline what is the quality giving the best quality products and services how by meeting or exceeding customer expectations but all of this is possible only if things are properly managed as in planned organized staff direction and control got it guys so this is about your tqm total quality management and consists of three aspects continuous improvement customer focus techniques aimed at
techniques aimed at improving quality of products and services and processes. These three things work together to give you total quality management. Always remember this. Continuously keep on improving. Never settle as they say. Obviously, customer has to be focused and find out ways, techniques to improve quality of products and services. So, that's how it works. Now, let's understand the eventual objectives. Aims at improving quality of organization output including goods, services. How? Through continual improvement. Requires company to maintain quality standards. Quality in all aspects. Things are done right the first time that defects and waste are eliminated. See, it's like this. Uh, even for you, when you are studying, ensure that you are giving TQM in your studies. You know, what happens at times is we, uh, the books are open, the laptop or the lecture may be open, but our mind is wavering somewhere else. Uh -huh. Is that happening with you? Focus, focus here. So then you are not giving TQM. Study for just one hour in the whole day. But that one hour should be so productive that, you know, you were totally into it. Mobile phones should be switched off. I understand that chalo, now you are watching the lectures on your mobile phone. So other than the watching on the, uh, the lectures, you know, your mind should not waver. Oh, let me see what's the WhatsApp. Let me also go to Telegram, to YouTube, to all of these things, to Instagram. No, then you are distracting yourself. You're not giving TQM in terms of your studies. So that's where it becomes very important to stay focused. To, so for a student, a TQM would be study even for one hour, but so good that it provides the best level of quality that is expected. And eventually from one hour, increase it to one and a half hour, to two hour, to three hour, and eventually things will fall in place. I hope we are clear. So TQM is a comprehensive management system which focuses on giving owners or customers needs by providing quality services. So let's write that down. Kind of TQM features, we can call them. T Q M features, right? So, what are they? First, what is the first feature? Focus on meeting owners or customers' needs by providing quality services. So, give quality services for customer satisfaction. for customer satisfaction. Then second, uh, everything should be at a reasonable cost. So you should also be cost conscious. The more cost conscious you are, the better pricing you will be able to give to the customer. So you have to be cost conscious. Third, then yeah, keep on writing. Focus on continuous improvement by default. The catch word continuous improvement will always be synonymous with TQM. So we will write here continuous improvement, continuous improvement. Then uh, focus on the way tasks are accomplished, yeah, emphasizes teamwork. So focuses will be on the teamwork aspect. Okay, then we have views organization as an internal system with a common aim. So your internal system should be good. So we will write here good internal systems. We can write here good internal systems. And, and, and finally, recognizes role of everyone in the organization. Yes. So, sabka saath, sabka vikas. Everybody has to be the role of everyone in the organization. Together we can done. So when all of this combined together, yes, gives us the whole clear cut concept of TQM with its main objective. Hello, with its main objective to eradicate waste and increase efficiency. That's the core thing. Remove waste. Keep on removing waste. Increase efficiency. And for that, 
we have a chapter lean system and innovation the third chapter which will take us through the whole ways of eradicating waste anyways when we reach there we will definitely try and understand that in a proper manner so i hope we are clear guys with this whole page of tqm now comes the next concept called as the six c's of tqm now let me tell you one thing if it was a theoretical paper i would have said for sure this question is going to come even in mcq based this question is a big big yes why because there are so many uh, quest, uh, so many exams where this question has been asked directly what direct question on six c's of tqm what are those six c's we will try and understand in 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 the easiest manner possible so let's write it down we will write here six c's of t q m first let's understand for sure there will be a question in mcq on this which amongst these is not a six c of t q m this is how the question will be framed because and they will put the options in such a way you will feel oh no this is also there Ah, this was also there no ah, this is also there no that way so we have to almost remember this learn this but before that i'll make you understand each one of them commitment first commitment should be there for all the people in the organization it is not that you will as a say i am the owner of the organization i have thought to bring uh, six c's in or tqm in my organization so i will now instruct everybody come on everybody you have to follow tqm but first it has to start from you charity begins at home so you have to be first committed totally and then expect the team workers to be equally committed to the cause a clear commitment from top level must be provided so that quality improvement becomes part of everyone's job becomes a part of everyone's job then second is the culture see culture plays a very important role nowadays right especially with the gen z's joining the organizations culture is very important the culture should be such that people should be willing to give more work should be willing to uh, you know put in more efforts for their organization you know as you have seen uh, as people say that when a player joins csk chennai super kings it's a, they have a different culture by default they are uh, you can say performance is increased why because possibly of their culture so culture needs to be modernized as i told you gen z on a continuous basis to encourage employee feedback focus with a equal focus on training with a equal focus on quality see till the time you don't train people how will they come to know what is their what is your culture what is the expectations from you so in those terms culture plays a very very important role right so give them train them so when i joined jp morgan the person who was you know whom i replaced trained me about each and every aspect about each and every process about the culture all of those things were explained to me and then i implemented them as a part of my daily routine so culture plays a very very important role so develop a good good culture and that should be the best thing for an organization next is continuous improvement see the first line it's a process not a program it has to go on and on always try to be better than what you were yourself yesterday constant improvement required in policies procedures controls all of these things so any company doing a manufacturing process or into services how well you are able to uh, service your customer is going to be the key changer next is cooperation amongst the employees which is called as tei total employee involvement see there would be situations where i would need a leave and my colleague would help me and vice versa so the employees should be ready to cooperate with each other at times even you as uh, article clerks wait for long long hours when there is a due date time so if there is a tax audit time during 30th september you have to uh, you know work more so what is that that is a part of tei total employee involvement used in development of improvement strategies and associated performance measure 
Next is customer focus. So I think continuous improvement and customer focus have already been said by us at least so many times that yes, we are totally clear with that. And then last is control. Control is basically telling us that you are, it has to be sustainable. You know, on regular basis, we have to ensure that the above things are implemented regularly. Okay, so there. So if you ask me that there is a person who has worked eight years, so you come to me and say that, sir, give me a schedule. I'll tell you that for the next ten days, study for eight years. One student comes to me and says that, sir, I studied for twenty hours for four days, and four days I did not work at all. I completed my eight years and then there is a student who will come to me and say that sir I studied for 10 hours for continuous eight days for me that person who has studied for 10 hours continuous eight days is a better person right because he is being consistent he is being disciplined right now for the person who has studied for 20 hours for four days did not work for four days for him to come back to again normalcy will be a big task as compared to somebody who is being doing it consistently do little that's okay but be consistent in your efforts and that's what control is all about making you ensuring you that you are consistent for your efforts all right guys so these are the six c's of tql because you know anything if you want it to compound will require consistency you have been studying consistently for the last five years Overnight, you will get your result that you are a chartered accountant. You know, one day before your result, you are nothing. Overnight, you are a chartered accountant. But it is those consistent five years effort that eventually, you know, you are going to get a compounding effect. Today, you, you are, your worth is 10,000 rupees per month. Overnight, your worth will become 1 lakh rupees per month. But it is this five years consistency which has multiplied, which has ensured this compounded return. All right, guys. So here we have six C's of TQM. I'm sure we'll be able to remember it now with the logical explanations that I've given. First is, yes, commitment from all levels of the organization. Second is a good culture is very important for the organization to strive and grow. Next is cooperation amongst the employees. Correct. Called as total employee involvement. Next from that is continuous improvement. So here we have the concept of continuous improvement so that is your fourth then customer yes customer is always always going to be the king so it is customer focus and last but not the least is called as control consistently delivering the best so these are the six c's of tqm again commitment culture cooperation remember these six c's because it will be asked in mcqs huh? Huh. Commitment, culture, cooperation, uh, uh, continuous improvement, customer focus and control. Done. Okay, from this six C's, we will now move on to the next concept. And this concept is given by the father of quality control, Mr. Edward Deming. Boy, if you go to Japan and use his name, people worship this person because he was the person who literally transformed Japan's economy from nowhere to one of the top three economies in the world. Why? Just by incorporating the philosophy of total quality management of quality, ensuring that Japan produces the best quality products which it is able to export throughout the world and earn a name for itself. Now, what did Deming said, philosophy of Deming was very clear that the quality issues are on account of two things. One, if the quality issue is on account of the worker, it is only going to be 15% of the time. 85% of the time, quality issues are only because the company is not giving proper training to the employees, 
the systems are not in place the processes are not being followed on a regular basis that is where 85 percent of the times the companies fail only 15 percent would be on account of a worker's uh, you know issue it's like you know, again your article ship if in article ship you are not able to perform audit of a particular client properly it is because you have not been given the training properly so if your principal finds an issue tell him sir Okay, 15% could be on my account, account of my issue, but 85% is because you have not given me proper training, is because you have not followed systems, processes and management. So, once the systems are in place, then according to Deming, everything will follow. For that, he has said 14 points. Sir, do we have to remember these 14 points? Let's first understand. Uh, once you go through it again, once you listen to my session, I think majority of it will be in your head. Let's start. First, create a constant purpose towards improvement. It is a long term process. It is not a short term process. So, you know, you will have to keep on working towards quality. It is not that once you have made a good quality product, chalo, now you can relax. No, it is a continuous process process constant purpose towards improvement then is adopt the new philosophy management should also adopt as i told you everybody in the organization total quality management should be involved third stop depending on inspections now this is a very good point that they have made huh? deming says that make the product so good that you don't need people to inspect it why do you inspect things? See, suppose if I am making a product, I will always want to inspect it that if there is any defect, I will rectify it and then send it to the customer so that there is no defective product sent to the customer. Deming had a different philosophy altogether. He said that there is no need at all for uh, inspection. Make the product, the, the supplier should be so good, the raw material verification should be so good, the process is the equipment should be so good that by default the product has to come out the best and there is no need for inspection required so that's what the thought process stop depending on inspections use a single supplier for any one item so that there is no variation in the products right suppose if i make one calculator from x supplier i make other calculator from y supplier uh, of raw material from other z supplier of raw material then in that case there could be a variation in the product so if there is one supplier you know, we know whom to contact for everything. We know the same quality will come to us and that's what we want. Use a single supplier for any one item. Improve constantly and forever. So, continuous improvement. Use training on the job. Very much required. Give people the training because things are ever changing. If you don't train people, then in that case, they will be stuck with the old ideologies, methodologies. Institute leadership. What is this? Uh, they, so show people the right path, career path as to if they stay in your organization, what is their growth path that they can look for. That is called as institute leadership. Eliminate fear. You know, it should not happen that I am doing an audit of a firm. Then I find some issues, some qualified opinions, but I have a fear of discussing it with my partner. That should not happen. So, there should not be any fear. There should be open, free way of communication. I should be able to communicate to my seniors, to my partners, whatever I feel is good for the organization. Right. Uh, so, otherwise, if there is a fear, it prevents workers from acting in organization's best interest. Otherwise, people will be like, okay, leave it, leave it. No, it should be like, okay, if there is any issue, we should be able to communicate. Break down barriers between departments. It should be like the purchase department should get in touch with the production department so that they know how many raw material to purchase. Production department should get in touch with the sales department so that production department knows how many goods to be uh, produced, to be sold. So all of the departments have to be internally communicating with each other. There should not be any barriers. Get rid of unclear slogans, slogans as in whatever is your mission and vision should be very clear to the employees of the organization. Eliminate management by objectives. This is interesting. Now, we would have heard that let's give a target to the employees that, okay, you have to make 10, say, uh, 100 units in one hour, 100 units in the whole day. 
Now, if you are giving such targets, there is a chance that in order to complete the target, the employee will compromise on quality. So, Deming says, no need to give targets. Eliminate management by objectives. Production targets reduce quality according to Deming. A different philosophy here. Remove barriers to pride of workmanship. So, there should not be much barriers between different layers of organization. I just observed once that Mark Zuckerberg sits in a cubicle along with all his other employees. So, there is no workmanship pride that, okay, I am the owner. Everybody almost at the same level and situation. Implement education and uh, self-improvement so education training should be an ongoing process even when i joined jp morgan i was a chartered accountant and a company secretary but still they asked me to join for international cfa course so that i could get more info about the international financial products make transformation everyone's job yes so that's very very important that it is not only one person, it is the whole company which has to work together to ensure that things go right. Just a simple point. Suppose there is a car. The first two, the front wheels are working very good. The back wheels are not working very good. Will the car move? Even if one tire is punctured or is not working well, will the car move? The answer is no. So, Together we can, right? So make transformation everyone's job. So I hope the points are clear. Now as far as remembering is concerned, two, three times once we read, we will be able to manage it, right? Let's, let's go through it. Create a constant purpose towards improvement. New philosophy as in uh, how to adopt the new things. We should be ready to adopt new things. Stop depending on inspections. Really liked it. Your work should be so good that you don't need uh, any inspection at all. Yeah? Use a single supplier for any one item. No variation. Single supplier so that we can get same quality product time and again. Improve constantly forever. Training, leadership. Eliminate fear. We should be easily able to communicate. There should not be any barriers between the departments. Break down barriers if there are any. Get rid of unclear slogans. Eliminate management by objectives. Don't give too much target, target. So such that, you know, in order to achieve the target, they will uh, break the rules or quality. Remove barriers to pride of workmanship. That's okay. Implement education and self-improvement and ensure that transformation becomes everyone's job. Everybody is associated with transformation part. These are the 14 Deming points which if instituted in a proper manner will take the organization to the next level as required. Alright guys, again you can also go, go through it. You will be able to recollect majority of the points. Then Deming, in order to implement the above things, came up with the concept of PDCA cycle. Let's, let's discuss this PDCA cycle now. Plan, do, check, act. This is focusing on continuous improvement as never-ending process. The example that we can take here is our studies. Suppose we have our exams in three months from now. Can I say we will have to plan? Plan the subjects, plan daily schedule, plan what we are going to do for the next one week. Uh, so say in one week I have to complete uh, direct taxes. In that one week I will be studying PGBP. On one day for 8 hours, capital gains and income from other sources next day, 10 hours. So all of that has to be taken care of. So what is that? That is called as a proper planning. Then from plan, we will move on to the second aspect which is do. Implement the process. So now you have made the plan. You have made the blueprint. Okay, 10 hours, 8 hours, 3 hours. In that also morning 5 to 8 a.m. I will be doing this. Morning 10 to 3 a.m. I will be doing this. All of that is written. So planning is done. But planning is just a piece of paper until unless executed. That execution is called as do. That execution is called as do. So do implement the process plan execution. P D. Then comes C which is check 
measure the effectiveness of the new process now give tests give tests so that you know you are checking that whether whatever planning and implementation you have done is proper or not and whatever mistakes that happen in test take corrective action act take corrective action act plan do check act can be asked for the uh, mcqs related to your studies is how you will remember got it done okay and now we come to the last aspect so here after 6 years of tqm we are also done with deming 14 points we are also done with pdca which is plan a do a check a act this is also done from our end this is also done from our end right and now we come to the last aspect which is basically criticism of total quality management criticism of total quality management let's start now implementation is okay not that uh, great we'll just read through it implementation of uh, tqm is a strategic decision first and foremost step in this process involves collecting data okay implementation uh, see here tqm implementation should be delayed until the organization is in a state where tqm is likely to succeed this is a this will be a question in your uh, mcq so ensure that tqm is implemented only when you are ready when your organization is ready it should not happen that uh, you know a part is following it or the other part is not following it it will all become a mess so tqm implementation delay until the organization is in a state where tqm is likely to succeed where you are able to apply it the way you want to if there exists an organizational problem just as unstable funding or weak administrative or poor employee morale don't implement it tqm would not be appropriate if poor employee morale is there funding is not there administrative things are weak managers are not there so that is a management audit helps in identifying the current levels of organization functioning and need of and areas in need of change so this is about your tqm implementation now comes the criticism okay what is the criticism so three people were there carlson albrecht albrecht and zemke they criticized according to me this criticism frankly speaking is not acceptable to me at least i don't feel they are the real criticisms but still since they have said i will write it down but according to me not acceptable sorry one criticism is focus on documentation so it's good only you know if everything is documented if you go in a big four everything will be documented and more the documentation better it is to recall everything but they feel it is too much of documentation of processes so it's okay so according to them one of the issue is excess focus on documentation you only tell me is it bad to document everything i don't think so so excess focus on documentation no worries then second thing they say is emphasis on quality assurance rather than Im improvement so they say that too much of quality 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 is there improvement is just a word they have not used it but again i don't think so if quality is improved quality is assured by default it is only possible if you are planning to improve so it's okay but okay now whatever i have highlighted this can be asked in mcq excessive focus on again quality assurance rather than improvement so this could also be a point of contention so too much of quality assurance uh, uh too much quality assurance assurance then internal focus that is at odds with the alleged customer orientation again too much internally focused within the employees and not focusing on the external which is the customer so over internal focus so that can be also one thing so these are the three criticisms now based on this criticism albrecht came up with a concept called as tei which is i told you some time back total employee involvement what is tei 
total employee involvement so he says that employees should be involved thoroughly should be involved thoroughly in the overall tqm process why see loyalty to the vision of the company through tough visible goals the more loyal the employees are the more time they will stay in the company and improve the systems and processes recognition of satisfied customers and motivated employees this is the ultimate combination that every organization wants if your employees are motivated they will ensure that the customers are satisfied if the customers are satisfied the business will grow which in turn you can use to motivate the employees right so motivation right. of employees is very important loyalty is again very important so let let me write these points here one is about employee loyalty so whenever word tei comes we are looking at employee loyalty yes second we are looking at customer satisfaction and employee motivation the answer is yes so second we are looking at customer satisfaction and employee motivation employee motivation then delegation of decision making to the point of responsibility by eliminating hierarchical tiers of authority to allow direct speedy response to customer needs so proper delegation of authority should be given see till the time you don't delegate your employees will not feel empowered see this the next line also is same only decentralization centralization means authority and power is at the top level decentralization means authority has been delegated authority has been delegated authority has been delegated so there is a decentralizer so there are head of departments who are responsible for their particular products processes services internally they have subdivided it more resulting into delegation and decentralization so this is what a uh, thing that can be used now a days by the organization what the concept of delegation and decentralization all right guys done so this is about it and one more criticism was of uh, tqm is that it may not be appropriate for the service based industries so according to them the and which is right also because when tqm was made the focus was only one manufacturing 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 but now there is this whole thing can be applied in tqs as well which is nothing but total quality service total quality service so tqs is is how we can put it forward so total quality service which is more customer oriented and creates an environment to promote enthusiasm and commitment so this is about your uh, tqm we complete our theory part for today which is understanding tqm six c's of tqm 14 deming points pdca cycle which is called as deming wheel implementation and criticism of tqm the counter of uh, t uh, criticism of tqm which is ti total uh, employee involvement and at the same time total quality services got it done and now just uh, there is a small case study relating to quality management programs that how companies do quality management programs they make uh, uh, companies that do not make quality a priority learn risk a long run survival you know even if you don't do this it's okay i'll still explain you but just telling you. why because here they are just giving examples that companies like general electric motorola have used tqm plus six sigma see here they have also used six sigma called as six sigma which we will do in chapter 3 lean system so at that point in time you will be more clear which is uh, defects reduced to 3.4 parts per million there is also a training called as black belt six sigma then there is national quality awards which are given both ge and motorola have had the primary goal of achieving total customer satisfaction so this is about it uh, so as a result they run quality management programs all right guys 
Okay, so done with the theory part for today. And as usual, we will try to make a combination of theory, then related to that practical questions, then related to that the MCQs. But now today, we will start first with the MCQs. So first we'll do the MCQs and then in connect, then we will do the uh, practical questions. Two practical questions is what I'm planning to solve today as well. So I think we should look good. Okay, chalo. So that's it. So all that we did, for today, if summarized, and this writing part will be available to you, the whole intention of giving you is, if you want a quick overview, bird's eye view, you can go through this. I'm sure you would have also written it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Chalo. Done. So, done. Total quality service. For that. So, with this, we can now open our MCQ books. Please, please, please open your MCQ books so that we can start with the magic MCQs. Okay, so now based on the theory done so far, let us quickly solve the few MCQs today. So please open. So till yesterday we had solved around 27 MCQs. Let's take them forward guys. Come on, chalo, open chapter 2. Yes, here we are. Chapter 2, MCQs. Okay. Chalo. So, till 27, I think we are done. Guys, I hope everybody has opened it. Chalo. On that note, let's start question number with question number 28. So, what does the question number 28 say? According to Deming, higher quality. Remember, remember Deming, the father of quality control. Okay, according to Deming, higher quality, A, results in higher cost, leads to cost savings, doesn't impact cost, it does, result in higher cost, no, increases profitability, yes, okay, but can I say main focus was on cost savings, so we will go with B, so 28B, next, what are the examples of prevention costs, scrap and rework is internal failure, quality audits is prevention, packing and inspection will be appraisal, Returns and allowances will be, uh, yeah. yes, correct. It will be external failure. So, quality audits 29C. Next, the six C's of TQM include all of the following except. So, I told you all that these are the kind of questions you can expect, uh, specially related to uh, six C's. Commitment, culture, creativity, continuous improvement. So, six C's of TQM include all of the following, except, so commitment is there, culture is there, continuous improvement is there, customer focus is there, cooperation is there, but creativity is not there. TQM focuses on, question of 31 everybody, TQM focuses on meeting shareholders needs, meeting customer needs, reducing employee involvement, increasing production costs. So, I will go ahead with the yeah, B part, meeting customer needs. Next, what does the PDCA cycle stand for in TQM? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Easy because we have just done PDCA cycle. When this is the examination and there is a burden of 13 chapters and all of them are intermingling, jumbling. At that point in time, even these things, easy things look difficult. Plan, do, control, analyze, perform, develop, check, act, product, direct, coordinate, uh, uh, adjust. No, plan, do, check, act. Yes, so 32 will be C, plan, do, check, act. 33, what is the strategic decision involved in TQM implementation? So, worrying to TQM implementation, delay implementation until organizational problems are resolved. Yes, implement TQM regardless of organizational issues. No, no, you should not. Focus only on customer needs and skip the management audit process. So, I think... Uh, a. Delay implementation till organizational problems are resolved. So, you have to be confident, you have to be clear as regards the implementation of TQM. Then comes question number 34. Uh, critics of TQM have pointed. What have they pointed out? A con focus on continuous improvement? No. M over emphasis on quality assurance. Ignoring continuous improvement. So that is what the critics of TQM have pointed out. Then from 35, we can see that the questions are related to SEM. But in between, there are further questions. Yeah, 
I marked it separately. The PDCA cycle is known as, so it was immediately after Deming's, so it is also called as Deming wheel and the answer will be 39B. Then let's come to question number 42, everyone. So 42, what does the iceberg model represent in context of the uh, cost of quality? So it tells us that only a majority costs are obvious and majority are hidden. Most costs are visible and only few are hidden? No. All costs are visible? No. No costs are visible? No. So I think it will be B. Few costs are obvious, majority are hidden in the iceberg. What does Deming 14 points methodology emphasize? Short term reaction over long term? Never. Dependence on inspection? Never. So 43A and B is not the answer. Fear as productive management tool? Never. Continuous improvement? Always. And customer focus. Okay, next. What is the main emphasis of 6 C's of TQM? Uh, reducing employee improvement, continuous improvement at all levels. Yes, that is what 6 C's of TQM require. Then I think the remaining questions are all uh, related to your supply chain management. So probably we will be doing this in the next session when we are done with the SCM part. When we are done with the SCM part. So I think this is up for uh, today's MCQ. Today's MCQ are done. And from here now, we will move on to the practical questions. We will move on to the... Yeah, here we are. We will move on to the practical questions. Just open, open the practical book. Everybody, open the practical book. Let's start with the practical questions as well, guys. So we are going to solve two questions. Uh, from the practical book. Question number 1 and 2 were done last time yesterday. So the next question today that we are going to solve is question number 6 everybody. Yes. Please open question number 6. This is the question that all of us are going to solve. Let's start. The CEO of P Limited is concerned with the amounts of resources currently spent on customers warranty claims. Each box of its product line is each box of its product is printed with a logo satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. P Limited is having difficulty in competing with X Limited because it does not have the reputation for high quality that X Limited enjoys. Since the warranty claims are so high, the CEO of P Limited would like to evaluate what costs are being incurred to ensure that quality of the product is maintained. Following information is collected from various departments within the company relating to 2223. Warranty claims 425,000, employee training cost, rework, lost profit from lost customers due to impaired reputation, cost of rejected units. Sales return processing and testing. So these are the 22-23 quality related costs. For the year 23-24, CEO is considering spending the following amounts on a new quality program. And the whole intention of incurring these amounts is that it results into a reduction of internal failure and external failure costs. See here, let's see what are the internal failure and external failure cost here. So as of 20 to 23, before the whole uh, program, new quality program is introduced in the year 23, 24. Before that, we can very well see that there are a lot of internal failure and external failure costs. Like first, warranty claims. Correct. So this is your external failure cost. Then employee training cost. What is this employee training cost thing? Can I say this is relating to your prevention? Okay, rework is your internal failure cost. Loss of profits from lost customers. As soon as the word customers come, we know that it will be a external failure cost. Cost of rejected units. See now, if, if a unit is rejected, after production, if any unit is rejected, we will have to rework on it. We'll have to restore it to its current value. So a lot of stuffs will have to, I mean, a lot of work will have to be done on that product. 
within the factory before it leaves outside the factory before it reaches the customer so can i say this will be a internal failure cost sales return processing as soon as sales come we know that it is an external failure cost and lastly testing we will put this into under the category of appraisal costs all right guys done during the year 23-24, CEO is considering spending the following amounts on a new quality program. Inspect raw material, re-engineer the production, supplier screening and certification, preventive maintenance on plant equipment. So, can I say these are the few cost of good quality that they are incurring. What are the cost of good quality they are incurring? Let's see. First, inspect raw material. Now, think and tell me when you are inspecting the raw material. Hello, when you are inspecting the raw material, what will it be? Will it be a prevention cost or will it be appraisal cost? Can I say it is during the process of production that you will be inspecting the raw material? Correct. So, this will become a appraisal cost. This will become a appraisal cost. Re-engineer the production process to improve product quality. Now, re-engineer the production process. So, to improve the product quality, so for quality is there, so we will put this as prevention. Supplier screening, again before the production process starts, we will check how the supplier is. Preventive maintenance on plant equipment, the word preventive itself tells that it's a preventive cost. Done? Done. P Limited expects the new quality program to save costs by the following amounts. Okay. So, as a result of this costs, we are able to save this much. Reduction in lost profits from lost sales due to impaired reputation, 8 lakh. Oh, wow. So, we are able to save 8 lakh rupees. Rework in, reduction in rework cost. So, we are able to save 2 lakh 50,000, 3 lakh 25,000. Reduction in sales return processing. So, again, sales returns are also reduced. So, all of this has resulted into a lot of savings of cost as is very much evidential from here. Now, to the required part. So, before we move on to the required part, one, a two, a three. I hope we are clear. This is relating to 20 to 23. We realize that there are a lot of quality related cost happening in 22 23 so we implement a program as a result of this program we are able to save a lot of costs let's come to the required part prepare a cost of quality statement for 22 23 showing the percentage hello showing the percentage of total cost of quality incurred in each cost category now this is where the mcq can be asked how i'll tell you just give me two minutes so we'll start with the first part we'll start with the first part and we'll, we'll try to solve that faster part. Just a moment, yeah? Okay. Yes. Just take two minutes, read the question, and then all of us should start together. Please open your notebook and pen. Open. Yes, we have to solve it. And then as we solve, I'll tell you how the MCQ can be framed based on this question altogether. Done. Everybody has read the question. So, now we will start. So, question 6. Quickly, everybody. Solution. Let's start. So, here we go. Warranty claims, employee training cost. So, first we will, we know the identification. So, first we will divide them. We will name this statement of quality related costs. Statement of quality related costs. We will divide this into three parts. One, two, three. 
Now the first one, yeah, the first one is your prevention cost, then appraisal, then internal failure, and then obviously the external failure. So let's start. Prevention okay. in prevention, which one is there? Employee training cost. Employee training cost is there in prevention. So we'll write here. Employee training cost. How much? One lakh twenty thousand. Done? Okay. Second is your appraisal cost. So while reading the question, we had already done the identification part. So now things can go pretty quickly. So appraisal uh, for prevention is done. Now appraisal testing 1,70,000. Okay, done. Next. Internal failure cost comprises of rework and cost of rejected units. Rework and cost of rejected units. Okay. How much is for rework? 3 lakh. Cost of rejected units 50,000. So, 3 lakh 50,000. Done? Yes. And then last, definitely not the least, your external failure cost. Let's see what all is included in external failure cost. Warranty, loss of profit and sales return. Oh, ho, 3, 3. Oh, warranty. Loss of profit. And sales return. Okay. Done. Sure. Now let's start with the final answer. And then during that, I'll tell you how an MCQ can be asked based on this question. Obviously, whole presentation part is not required for you. But when we have to solve an MCQ, there will be a pattern which we will have to follow to solve the question. So we will have to do this much part of this, how the MCQ will be asked, I'll show you. So see here, first I'll write here, cost, total cost. So what is the total cost of prevention? We'll write that. So we'll write here, total cost, 1,20,000, 1,20,000. Okay, uh, the amount is yet to be written here. I'll write here. Uh, 425, 810, 175. 425, 810. 425, 810. And 175. So, see how much is this? 425, 810, 175. Five and it is fourteen lakh ten thousand. Okay, okay. Now the last part, which will be asked as a MCQ for sure in the examination, and that is percentage of quality cost. So they will ask you, how much is the percentage of total quality cost of external failure cost? So, how much is the external failure cost? 14 lakh 10,000. How much is the total cost? Quickly do. So, 14 lakh 10,000 plus 3 lakh 50 plus 1 lakh 70 plus 1 lakh 20 and it is 20 lakh 50,000. And now we have to determine, say, appraisal cost 1 lakh 20,000 divided by 2050. It is 5.86%. 5.85%. So 5.85%, then 170 divided by 
2050 and this is 8.30 approx then 350 divide by 2050 so this will become 17 Point zero seven percent, and the last being fourteen ten divide by twenty fifty, which is sixty eight point seven eight percent. Now they will ask you, what is the percentage of total quality cost in the given question for external failure cost? For that, you will have to calculate this till the end to get your final answer. Anyways, are we clear, guys? Everybody. Gotcha. Yes. So this is about the first part of the question number six. Now the second part. See here. Hmm. Prepare a cost-benefit analysis of the new quality program that has been introduced, showing how the quality initiative will affect each cost category. So see here. It's a basic, basic cost benefit planning that we have to do. See. this is the cost that we are incurring which is resulting into this benefit this is the cost this is the benefit right see let's let's classify the benefit as well reduction in rework cost internal failure will be reduced reduction in warranty cost external failure reduction in sales return processing external failure reduction in lost profits due to impaired so external failure so your internal and external failure is being reduced because Yes, prevention and appraisal cost is being incurred. Let's solve this second part of the question as well, very very quickly, very very quickly. So, second part, cost benefit analysis. Second part, we have to do a. We have to do a cost benefit analysis. Sure. So. first inspection of from at no first we'll write down the prevention ones so we write the prevention costs this prevention cost what all it consists of a uh, reduction in sorry reengineer the production process re engineer production process 7 lakh 50000 so this is an expenditure a big expenditure that we are incurring a prevention cost okay then other than that what are the other costs that we are incurring let's see other prevention costs supplier screening and certification so supplier screening will also result into additional cost how much 30000 so we have 30000 right okay then mm, then there is so this is done this is done this is done preventive maintenance on equipment preventive maintenance on equipment how much is that well it is 70000 so in all how much is the prevention cost guys in all how much is the prevention cost 7 lakh 50 plus 30 780 Plus seventy. Can I say eight lakh fifty thousand? So eight lakh fifty thousand is the prevention cost. Thankfully, in case of appraisal cost, I think there is hardly one. Yes, and that is inspection raw material for one lakh twenty thousand. Inspect raw material one lakh twenty thousand. And in all. Total cost of. non conformance is 9 lakh 70000 is 9 lakh 70000 are we clear everybody this is the cost that we have incurred hello this is the cost that we have incurred which has resulted into a benefit now the benefit should obviously be 970 if the benefit is more than 970 we will accept the new cost management program if not we will not accept as simple as that chalo let's start so what is the benefit that we are getting here internal first internal failure benefit so first internal failure benefit is relating to rework in reduction cost 
so reduction in rework and that is 250000 that is 250000 and then we have external failure in case of external failure also there are three reduction in lost profits reduction in lost profits reduction in warranty and sales return processing reduction in warranty and sales return so let's see 8 lakh 325 150 Eight lakh three twenty five one fifty. So in all, how much is my savings or what we call as benefit? Eight plus two ten, thirteen, fourteen lakh, fifteen lakh twenty five thousand. Wow, fifteen lakh twenty five is the savings, whereas the cost is nine lakh seventy thousand. We should definitely accept the project. Cost benefit. How much is the benefit? Fifteen twenty five. How much is the cost? Nine seventy. Tell me, what should we do? Correct. We should implement cost management quality program. As it results in. as it results in savings of how much so from 1525 it has gone down to 970 and which is rupees 5 lakh 55000 hey are we understanding yes sir chal done with this the sum almost done now there is a third part see here again we will implement uh, implement the cost management quality program implement the cost quality cost management quality program as it is resulting into a 555000 profit got it done done are done now the third part of the question is exclusively theory you can just go through it show how the manager trade offs between the four categories of quality cost so this is pretty simple you have to discuss in length about the prevention appraisal internal failure external failure which is obviously not a part of our exam it will be asked but in the form of mcqs which we have already prepared yesterday and today as well okay guys so done with this question if you want theory is there you can just go through it in your leisure time always good to have knowledge of things see here prevention appraisal cost are to be taken care of for avoiding cost of poor quality and other than that also the typical things are there plus we know that this is a time when yeah the time when overall the theoretical part of any question will get a little ignored will get a little are we clear guys done with this question Uh, hope you have understood the working eventually they will ask in the question tell the in the mcq tell the amount of savings or benefit from this project so we have now covered everything and i hope we are clear as well in terms of understanding acha everybody acha done so this question is done now we will come to the next question and that is the question number 9 probably the last question in terms of practical question yes we'll be done with this and done with the session as well so so we'll start with question number 9 h automobile group the last question of the day is among the top 20 business houses in india it has been founded in the year 1930 at the height of india's movement for independence from the british The group has an illustrious history. Its footprint stretches over a wide range of industries spanning automobiles, two-wheelers, manufacturers and three-wheeler manufacturers. Its headquarters is located at Hyderabad, but
बाइक प्रोडक्शन इज वन सेगमेंट ऑफ एज ग्रुप मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एच वॉन्ट्स टू एनालाइज द फॉलोइंग इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर द मंथ ऑफ एप्रिल देर हियर इज द कॉस्ट डेटा Here is the volume and activity data. Okay. Due to the quality issues in the month, the bike production line experienced unproductive downtime, which was seven lakh seventy thousand. H carried out a quality review of its existing suppliers to enhance quality levels during the month at a cost of one lakh twenty five thousand. Prepare a statement showing total quality costs. Advise any two measures to reduce. the non conformance cost chal let's start guys so here we are with the cost data let's start okay customer complaints center cost is there first identify what kind of cost is this customer complaint center cost hmm whenever customer is there tell me what kind of cost will it be yes absolutely external failure cost okay then equipment testing cost can i say appraisal okay we'll write your appraisal warranty repair warranty again external failure okay manufacturing rework rework is always internal right now see closely observe this is uh customer complaint center cost 35 per hour the fact that customer complaint center has to be kept means the customer is getting complaints if the customer is getting complaints means there is a defective product delivered to the customer means it is a external failure cost how much 35 per hour but how many hours are there 2000 hours are there so just 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 if if i write down here question number 9 again statement of quality costs i write here statement of quality costs and then here we are uh, particulars and rupees yeah so let's start first first is that we can see here external failure cost so now if we if we see external failure cost first we can write that also that's not a problem so external failure cost how much they have said it is customer complaint center cost so customer complaint center cost 35 per hour and in all there are 2000 hours hello in all there are 2000 hours so 35 per hour in 2000 hours which is equal to 70000 which is equal to 70000 got it done then equipment testing cost which is how much can i say it is 18 per hour 18 per hour and equipment testing time is 1600 hours so we will write here appraisal cost how much is the appraisal cost so we can be quick here uh, equipment testing okay equipment testing how much so 18 per hour into 1600 hours 18 per hour to 1600 So eighteen into sixteen hundred, it is twenty eight eight hundred. Acha, acha. Next, again warranty repair is also external failure. So I'll write here warranty repair. How much? Fifteen sixty per bike, and in all there are two thousand six hundred bikes. Oh, two thousand six hundred into fifteen sixty. Is forty lakh fifty six thousand. So, hmm, yeah, 
1560 into 2600. 40,56,000. Done? Done. Then, internal failure cost is manufacturing rework. So, next in line is internal failure and that is manufacturing rework. How much is it? 228 per bike and there are in all 3200 bikes. So, 228 per bike into 3200 bikes. Tell me how much is it? 228 into 3200, 729,600. Done. Are we all clear till here? Okay, next. Two more costs. See, production line experience unproductive downtime. See here. What is downtime? Mm -hmm. Downtime is as good as your idle time. Now, if there is an idle time, see, in prevention and appraisal, there is no scope of idle time. It is only in the internal failure cost that there will be an idle time. And that is what this cost represents. So, next is internal failure, which is downtime. And that is 7,70,000. And then H carried out a quality review. Quality review will be prevention cost 1,25,000. So, prevention cost that is quality review. How much? 1,25,000. Got it? Got it. So, finally, we will get the total quality costs. How much? Uh, 70 plus 40, 56, 28, 800, 729, and, and, and in all, it is 57,79,400. Yes, everybody, did you get the same? 57,79,400. Done. Now, again, the question may come, what are the total quality costs? See, it is better to write it systematically. Sir, in the exam, will we get the rough working notes? 110%, yes. So, don't worry for that at all, okay? So, this is about your total quality costs and here we are. Gotcha? Done. Done with this question as well. State any two measures to reduce the non-conformance cost. So, the total quality management can be used to reduce the non-conformance cost. Right? Yeah. Warranty can be done in a proper manner. TPM is something that you will come in uh, lean system chapter 3. That also you will learn how uh, you know external failure internal failure cost can be removed so that is a part of theory we will be doing it very soon in chapter 3 and other than that you can also use tqm so the typical theory questions we are already doing in the mcqs that we are doing these kind of questions the writing descriptive ones we won't come so not a problem at all even if it comes we are through with the concepts so should not be a problem and we should be able to manage it all right, guys, gotcha, everybody, any doubts, done, clear, cool. Okay, so as usual today also, theory concepts, TQM done and dusted, practical questions done, MCQs done. Tomorrow when we meet, we will meet with a new concept called as supply chain management. We'll try to complete the theory and a few practical questions related to that and one more session, one or two more sessions and we'll be done with this chapter. Okay then, time for me to say hasta la vista. Keep smiling. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.